Right, so uh, joining me in the FEMS 2019 booth today is uh, Ali Hughes, who is a PhD student at the University of Strathclyde. So yeah. you're based around Glasgow, uh, which is where we are today. So uh, do you mind giving a brief introduction to uh, yeah, yourself and a bit about the research you've been doing? Great. Um, yeah, so I'm a recent convert to the dark side of microbiology. Um, all of my background training has been in chemistry so far. Uh, so I did my undergraduate degree in the National University of Ireland in Galway in chemistry. Um, I then did a couple of years as a teaching and research assistant in a natural products lab in uh, Florida. And then I moved over to Glasgow in 2017 to start my PhD with Catherine Duncan at the University of Strathclyde. We were talking earlier and you told me that you've just started an industry placement. So how is it like working in industry versus your academic time? Yeah, it, it's a lot different. So my PhD is funded by the IBIOIC, which is the Industrial Biotechnology Innovation Centres. Um, so each student has a four-year PhD. They're based at the university, but will do a three-month three to 12-month placement uh, with a company. So it's really nice. I work with a, with a startup um, company that builds and designs photobioreactors because I, I work on microalgae on photosynthetic organisms. Cool. Um, so it's quite nice working with a small Scottish company. And I'm now living up in the Highlands, which is definitely a different experience to living in the busy city like Glasgow. Nice. Um, so I'm guessing that you have to provide the light artificially because in the winter you're not going to have much sunlight in the highlands to be growing these photoalgae. Yeah, so there, there's quite a lot of open pond systems that are in other parts of the world where they get a lot more reliable sunshine um, yeah. hours than we do. <laughs> uh, so the, the photobioreactors, yeah, they're, they're LED lights. Okay. Um, and now the LEDs are becoming so much cheaper. Um, it's becoming a lot more feasible to use artificial light in order to cultivate algae. And I think that that's where the industry, certainly in the UK, is moving forward with that. And I guess in the winter, when it's pretty dark, you can go and hang out amongst the LEDs to get some yeah. light in your skin. Okay. <laughs> Try and get some warmth. Wonderful. <laughs> what is your favorite microbe and why? Um, right now, my favorite microbe is, I'm going to say Phaeodactylum. Um, the reason why is that when I started doing microbiology, I decided to work on microalgae, which are notoriously difficult to work with. Um, they are just so diverse. Um, so my favorite one so far has been Phaeodactylum tricornatum. Okay. So that's the guy that I've been working with the most. He's my, um, he's really robust. It's really, really hard to kill him. I've tried several times completely unintentionally nice. to do it. Um, and he's just hangs on through and lets me make all the mistakes so that I want. So good for lab work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's nice an absolutely brilliant companion. lab rat. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> probably him and Donaliella species. They are really, really great at, um, at, at encouraging a novice microbiologist yeah. like myself. Okay, so you can just make as many mistakes with them and they'll be forgiven. Yeah, That's yeah good. they're great. <laughs> nice. Um, and I guess so. The next question is to kind of open up the conversation to be able to be. Um, talking about how the whole world can get something out of microbiology. So um, I want to ask, what one piece of microbiological knowledge should everybody in the world know about? So I think the most important thing that we need to do as scientists in, in general, and I think microbiology right now, because there's so many global crises that microbiology can influence, I think it's really important to know how to talk about your research to someone that doesn't know about your research. So. Um, my go-to is the first thing that I always tell people is that we get the blue smarty back thanks to bacteria, thanks okay, to cyanobacteria. Yes. And so I think everyone should have one little fun fact that means something to every person in the general public about their project. Mm. So the blue smarty had artificial colorings, right? And then yeah. it got taken out of service because yeah. it was... I think cancerous or something. And so the new pigment comes from cyanobacteria? Yeah, so it's phycocyanin. So it's one of the only naturally blue pigments that's produced. Um, and it comes from cyanobacteria. And so Nestle banned all artificial colors from their, from their oh, foods. Okay, yeah. And then they were able to reintroduce the blue Smarty thanks yeah. to cyanobacteria. Wonderful, good to have that back in our, yeah. in our Smarty tubes. Yeah. Um, and I guess, so yeah, the final question is to think that science is a human process. We can't do it without people doing research or communicating it or thinking about microbes. So for you, who's your microbiological hero and why? Um, it's gonna sound really, really cheesy, but probably, um, probably my supervisor, Catherine Duncan, is probably my hero in terms of developing me as a professional and developing me as someone that I, I want to have a career in academia. Mm. And there's an awful lot of soft skills that you don't get taught at any other point. Um, so she's been really, really great at encouraging me as as like a researcher and as a scientist in planning my experiments in gaining confidence to go and do that. Um, and then probably from the more technical side right now, Sebastian Jubu is my okay, absolute yeah. favorite person in the world. He's no longer in academia. He, he's still kind of at the cusp of academia and industry. So he works with Santella Limited, the company that I'm working with. 
um, and he does a lot of projects in collaboration with the Scottish Association for Marine Science mm. and he is an encyclopedia on microalgae so it's been really good being able to tap into his knowledge. So. Okay nice, so you've got sort of someone developing the soft side and then the hard skills to kind of fully round you off as mm. a researcher. Yeah, it's been a really really nice experience having that like a, an array of different people that help me with different parts of my career. Great. Well, thank you for joining me in the FEMS 2021 booth and talking about your favorite microbes and blue smarties and the heroes who've helped you develop as a researcher. So if you ever fancy joining us at a FEMS conference, we have a, a conference lined up in 2021 in Hamburg. And uh, I'm just going to let you get on with enjoying the rest of FEMS 2019. So uh, I hope you have a wonderful day and it's been great to chat. Thanks very much. Hope to see you there. Yeah, thanks. Thank